the 1st Virginia Brigade. The immediate command of newly appointed Brigadier General Thomas J. Jackson. Now, Jackson was a very able and experienced officer. He had graduated 17th in his class at West Point back in 1846. He served with distinction as an artillery officer in the Mexican War. And uh, for about 10 years prior to the Civil War, Jackson led a rather obscure existence as a professor at the Virginia Military Institute. Now, Jackson was perhaps not one of the more popular professors among the cadets at VMI, uh, but still he had a pretty good grasp of military science. And when Jackson arrived here at the head of his column, he quickly sized up the situation. It was obvious to him that the Confederate lines on Matthews Hill were in the process of falling back in great disorder. Looking over the ground, Jackson determined the next best place to meet the enemy was in fact here on the Henry Farm. Jackson found an ideal position for his five regiments of infantry and several batteries of artillery and began deploying uh, these troops in a new line of battle. While Jackson was forming his line, Brigadier General Barnard B. of South Carolina came riding up. General B.'s command had already been cut to pieces over on Matthews Hill, and that's essentially what he reported to Jackson. Jackson was overheard to respond, very well, we will meet the enemy here and give them the bayonet. Whereupon General B. rode off toward the Robinson farm on the far side of the field to try to find what was left of his scattered command. Later that afternoon, General B. did find the remnants of the 4th Alabama Volunteers. That regiment had suffered some of the heaviest losses that morning, including uh, their commanding officer, Colonel Jones, who had been mortally wounded. So. General B. took it upon himself to rally these troops and lead them back into the fighting personally. In doing so, he drew his sword, pointed towards Jackson's position, shouting out, Look, there stands Jackson like a stone wall. Let us rally on the Virginians. Well, if you look carefully on the base of that monument out there, you'll see those words carved in stone. But to be truthful and honest, we're not absolutely sure that's what General B. said. Uh, there are several different versions to the story. Unfortunately, General B. never had an opportunity to clarify what he actually said that day. He was also among the casualties, being mortally wounded. And you see this uh, white stone monument over here. Nevertheless, uh, the Southern newspaper correspondents quickly picked up on the story. It was evident that somebody said something that likened Jackson to a stone wall. And a living legend was born. Stonewall Jackson certainly would gain a great deal of fame from uh, this battle. 